Have you ever been told that you are too ambitious? Then you are best. Have you ever been told that you can't do something or you shouldn't do something? Then you are best. Has an ex ever spread lies about you behind your back? Then you are best. Bess was a woman who achieved so much, she went from modest wealth to becoming the second wealthiest woman in the country. She managed to hold on to power in an age that was designed to squash women's power in every way. And she built more than any other woman in British history. And yet, throughout history, she has been maligned and trivialised. Bess built Hardwick as a celebration of her wealth and her status. And it's the final, if you like, statement of how far she's come in life. The dominant picture we have of Bess derives from her husband, Shrewsbury. It was Shrewsbury that presented Bess as a scheming shrew who emasculated men and was intent on building up her own wealth. But this is deeply unfair. I believe that it's one-sided and it privileges that male perspective. And really it's time that Bess's own voice was heard. She was born Elizabeth Hardwick on the site of what is now the Old Hall at Hardwick and she was of gentry status but of lower gentry status which means that she had money but not great wealth. She was bumbling along the bottom of the, the, the upper classes if you like. Bess married four times, first when young to Robert Barlow who died early and secondly in a love match to the very wealthy Sir William Cavendish. They were married for 10 years and Bess seems to have been pregnant at almost yearly intervals. She gave birth eight times, she probably miscarried once, and she had six children who survived to adulthood. Two of her daughters died in infancy. And then Cavendish died. Now mortality rates were higher in the 16th century, but the grief felt the same. Cavendish also left her with great debt to the treasury. Very bravely, she lobbied Parliament to make sure that her lands wouldn't be seized to pay the debts. I know of no other non-royal woman in this period who tried such a thing. Her debts were eventually settled by her third husband, Sir William St. Lowe. He died after just six years of marriage and he left Bess the bulk of his estate. His family were outraged. They thought that Bess had stolen their inheritance. And this is when we start to hear trash talk about Bess. They thought that she had exercised undue influence on her husband. They called her ambitious, avaricious, acquisitive. But at least things started to look up when she met her fourth husband-to-be, the wealthiest man in the country, George Talbot, Earl of Shrewsbury. The signs that Shrewsbury and Bess were in love, we can see from the letters they sent to each other in the early years of their marriage. They were using names like my jewel, my sweetheart, my dear gnome. And gnome seems to have been a pet name that they shared. Um, it means mine own. Within 10 years, the marriage started to break down. The real problem is that there were three people in the marriage. Elizabeth I had charged Shrewsbury with the lavish upkeep of her rival, Mary, Queen of Scots. And the strain of those costs over 16 years, as well as all the time spent with the beautiful Scottish Queen who could not abide Bess, turned Shrewsbury against his wife. Shrewsbury was extremely vindictive. He said, that Bess was using unnatural means and malice against him. He said that she ruled and overruled him. He even used sexual slanders against Bess. He said that she had an insatiable desire and greedy appetite. When in 1583, Bess went to one of their other properties to see to some business there, Shrewsbury wouldn't let her return home. He cut off her finances and then tried to seize some lands that William Cavendish had given her. When she refused to give them up, Shrewsbury sent 40 armed men to her safe house. They broke down the doors and looted the house. The collapse of their marriage was a national scandal. Even the Queen, Elizabeth I, weighed in. There was a commission set up to actually look at this messy breakdown of a marriage. And it found in Bess's favour. It supported her view that she was actually the constant wife. She had done nothing wrong. So it actually exonerated her. 
Throughout history, Bess has been described by historians as being rapacious and being ambitious and being a shrew. I mean, this goes back to the 17th century. We have William Camden, in the 18th century, Horace Walpole, and above all, a man called Edmund Lodge. He called Bess a termagant, which is a word that means a bad-tempered, overbearing woman. You can only use this word about a woman. He said that she had the tongue of an adder. He said that she was proud, furious, selfish and unfeeling, a terror to her husband, and a woman of masculine understanding, whatever that means. But what's kind of shocking is that even recent very good historians pick up on what Lodge said. I've seen her described as a termagant. I've seen her described as a woman of very masculine understanding. And comparisons are made between her and Mary Queen of Scots. And it's said that Mary Queen of Scots is very feminine, but actually Bess is the exact opposite. Again and again, there's this idea that Bess is too much like a man. But what Shrewsbury and historians said about her is very different from what the evidence really suggests of her character. She comes over as actually someone who was very interested in people. She was very generous to her family and also to her servants. She paid for the health care. She certainly wasn't the shrew that Shrewsby portrayed her as. In the aftermath of the breakdown of her marriage, Bess decided to build a new house, this one. Hardwick is a big, grand celebration of female ownership at a time that many women were facing legal barriers to owning property. But it's also a more quiet, personal symbol of separation, loss, regret. She was unable to live with her husband for long periods of time and throughout her correspondence during these years, she, she maintained that she wanted to. And so after Shrewsbury's death, you know, she builds Hardwick, and it is a symbol of that isolation. She's climbed to the top of Tudor society, but she never fully recovers from that scandal. Hardwick Hall in itself is a testament to a woman who survived all the restrictions on female power of the 16th century. She built this place to show her own status, her power and her wealth, and she moved in on her 70th birthday. Remember that when you go up all those stairs. Bess's husband said she had an insatiable desire and greedy appetite. These are sexual slanders. Have you ever been slut-shamed? Then you are Bess. Bess lost four husbands and two children in infancy. If you've experienced loss, then you are Bess. Have you ever felt like the only woman in a man's world? Then you are Bess.